So perivascular spaces are a phenomenon that uh, is detected on MRI um, and it's very difficult to identify them precisely experimentally. So we try to do that in two ways. One is observational studies on post-mortem human brains from um, brain banks in the UK, such as the Newcastle Brain Tissue Resource, or uh, experimentally in mice. The problem is that uh, these perivascular spaces, the dilated perivascular spaces, occur mainly in the white matter. You know, the brain's got, of course, gray and not white matter. And the white uh, matter uh, to gray matter ratio in the mouse brain is hugely different from humans. So there's no white matter. So it's very difficult to perform translational experimental studies with them, which is why there is such a, a problem and an interest in them. They generally uh, detect, and this is just collating work that my lab has done and work from around the world, they, they express a failure of clearance of interstitial fluid from the brain. How do the dilated perivascular spaces connect to the interstitial fluid uh, of the brain. So the brain and the eye are two organs that do not have traditional lymphatic vessels. So everywhere else in the body, we're equipped with vessels that drain fluid and cells towards the lymph nodes and the um, uh, uh, lymphatic system. The brain does not have these uh, uh, vessels. So um, what my lab has done and where I've sort of uh, contributed is uh, to define the lymphatic drainage pathways of the brain and we have shown through experimental studies and uh, comparing them to the pattern of deposition of a protein called amyloid beta in the walls of the blood, blood vessels we have shown that the pathways for drainage of interstitial fluid from the brain are along tiny channels called basement membranes in the walls of arteries. Um, and because these tiny channels are around the smooth muscle cells, they are intramural, they are in the wall of the vessel. Uh, periarterial, they happen mostly along the walls of capillaries and arteries and of course they drain interstitial fluid, which is why we've abbreviated this process as IPAD. Now, uh, IPAD is essentially a form of lymphatic drainage of the brain parenchyma, not the CSF. The CSF has different drainage routes. The problem with IPAD is uh, because it occurs along tiny channels, which are 100, 150 nanometers thick, um, and these channels are wrapped around the smooth muscle cells that actually decrease in their efficiency with age and with arteriolosclerosis, iPad fails with age. And therefore, proteins such as amyloid beta or cystatin C in different mutations build up in the walls of arteries as cerebral amyloid angiopathy, which can be sporadic, which can be part of uh, uh, the spectrum of Alzheimer's disease. Um, we know that the motive force for iPad is derived from the strength of the uh, contractions of these smooth muscle cells and not the cardiac pulsations as it used to be thought. And therefore, the, anything that will interfere with the function of the smooth muscle cells will also affect iPad. Once iPad fails, of course, the first sign is the buildup of amyloid beta in the walls of arteries, but that is accompanied by a, 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 a distal, or actually I should say proximal, in the uh, process of drainage, buildup of fluid. Um, the arteries in the white matter have a very different composition to the arteries in the gray matter. In the white matter, there are two layers of leptomeninges around the wall of the artery, 
creating a potential space. And that's where fluid accumulates when there is blockage upstream.